Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where you can view all of my videos which are organized by topic. This is part five of decimals and we go over how to add positive decimal numbers and this is one of the problems we do. Here's an example and we do several other problems. To add numbers that may contain decimals, I always think of money. So, for instance, if I had $2.34 and I wanted to add $4.51, for instance, maybe I collected $2.34 from one person and $4.51 from another person, you would add the numbers 2.34 and 4.51. And what you do is you line up the decimal points and add. Now here's why this works. 2.34, remember what that means? That just means 2 and 34 hundredths, right? And 4.51 just means 4 and 51 hundredths. So if you remember the meaning behind decimals, you are just adding fractions that have a common denominator here, and that would be 6 and 85 hundredths, which of course is how we write the number is a mixed number, and over here, 6.85 is how we write it as a decimal number. Okay, what about if we did not have um, a decimal? For instance, what if we wanted to add fifteen dollars to three dollars and twenty-five cents? Again, you would add, really, how many whole dollar bills do you have? You just have fifteen dollars and three dollars, that's the whole part, in the twenty-five. So you can write the fifteen is fifteen point zero zero plus three point two five and get it this way, All right? And you could also write this like I did over here with the fractional form. You could write you're adding fifteen plus three and twenty-five hundredths, which is eighteen and twenty-five hundredths. The key is we want to line up the decimal points and have the same place values, uh, I'm sorry, the same number of digits after the decimal point. So in other words, if they're both in hundredths, it's easy. Okay? So let's try another problem. Let's say instead we had 7.3 plus 8.52 plus 6. All right, so how would we do this one? One way is to realize that, you know, 6 means the same thing as 6 point something. All right, so I'm going to start off just writing the first number, 7.3, and I'm going to write the second number, but I'm going to line up the decimal point. So I'm going to write 8.52. And then I'm also going to add the number 6. Okay, remember that means 6 point. Now I suggest you fill in zeros everywhere so they all look like they've got the same number of digits after the decimal point. So I could add a zero here, and a zero here, and a zero here. And then you just proceed to add and your answer for the decimal point just stays in the same spot. So let's see, this gives me 2. 8, 15, and 6 is 21. So this would be 21.82. That's really the key to adding with decimals is lining up the decimal points. Now, it's a little bit tricky if you had changed these into um, fractions because you would have 7 and 3 tenths plus 8 and 52 hundredths plus 6. And so the trick here, why do I write 7.30? Because in order to add the fractions here, you would want to get a common denominator, which is 10 over 10. That's how I would get the denominator of 100. And now notice what you really have here is 7 and 30 hundredths plus 8 and 52 hundredths 
plus 6, and then you just simply add the whole number parts to get 21 and 82 hundredths. Let's look at another example. How about if you had 5.83 plus 6. Let's say 7, um, let's say 9. Okay. It was a little bit trickier if you had changed these to fractions. I could have 5 and 83 hundredths, right? These all are, both have two places after the decimal point, so you know what? I'm going to write it underneath 6 and 79 hundredths. So I've got a common denominator already, so that's cool. So I have 11 and, now I have to add 83 and 79 to figure out how many hundredths I have. So that's 162 hundredths. Well, the problem is that it is a mixed number, but this is an improper fraction here. This 162 over 100. So then I'd have to think about that. This number here, remember this means 11 plus this fraction. It means 11 plus 1 and 62 hundredths, which is 12 in 62 hundredths, which as a decimal, how would you write 12 in 62 hundredths? You would write 12.62. So changing to fractions, it's kind of a lot of work here, right? But that is the answer, 12.62. The easier way to do this is simply to line up the decimal points. So let's do it that way. We have 5.83 plus 6.79, and we know our answer is going to have that decimal point here, and if we add this way, we automatically are doing this carrying as we do the addition. So this is how we normally would do it, but this is why it works. Okay, so let's try this problem. I put these on your own, but I meant to try this problem on your own. Okay, so put the video on pause and try this problem, and then put it back on. Let's see how you do. All right, so what I'm going to do is simply put all these numbers vertically, but I'm going to line up the decimal points. So I've got 4.78, and this is why you have to be careful and neat in math. 16.305 and 10. Now, where's the decimal point on the 10? You don't see it, but it's after uh, the, the 10, right? So we've got 10 point. And we're going to add these. And it's a good idea to fill in all those extra zeros. So the biggest uh, number as far as how many places after the decimal point is right here at 16.305. So what we'd like to do is put zeros for all of them so that there's three places for each number. It's easier if you do that, just so you don't get confused about the place value. Not necessary, but useful. Okay, so now if we add, so we have a 5, that's an 8, 13 carry the 1, 6, 13 carry the 1, and 53, I hope I did that correctly, I've got 53, 0.385. Now, remember what that means? 53 and 385 thousandths. So, usually you just leave it in decimal form, but I'm just reminding you that that's how you would write the same exact number as a mixed number. So, if you would have changed all these to mixed numbers and gotten a common denominator, etc., it would end up also being 53 and 385 thousandths, as long as I didn't make any stupid mistakes here, and I'm hoping I did not. Okay. Here's one more problem for you to try for good measure, and then we will go on. So try this on your own by putting the video on pause first. Okay, let's see, we're going to just line up with the decimals, 91.58. 307934. All right, so we're going to fill in the extra zeros. This is optional, but then you can see all the place values sort of line up here, and we add. So 
So I got 445.714, which is 445 and 714 thousandths. On the next video, we'll learn how to subtract fractions. Hi, this is Julie Harland, and I'm your math gal. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com, where you could search for any of my videos organized by topic.